Hello everyone. Uh, good evening to uh, uh, hope you are guys uh, doing good. This session uh, was planned yesterday, but due to some technical issues, it got cancelled. And uh, today we are taking it. So this session is based on um, this is based on why and why we need geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and how we can use them. How to select the tolerances particular tolerances in particular case so we will discuss that hope hope uh, you guys are uh, doing good keeping safe and i want to uh, thank you my members naveen and anand uh, for encouraging me uh, they have joined on uh, youtube and subscribe my membership so i want to thank you them um, please help me uh, and support me uh, by taking uh, channels membership uh, that will motivate me to keep doing uh, these videos so uh, that will be helping me um, on monetary basis so thank you and uh, let's start today's topic so today's topic is uh, why and how we need uh, why we need geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and how we use them so let's start now why geometric tolerances are required let's see that yesterday we seen that but i will repeat it again so this is suppose uh, i want to manufacture a rod and I send it a drawing with a diameter and length to the manufacturer and he manufactures it. And what I say in a conversation to uh, that manufacturer, I need it uh, perfectly straight. Perfect straightness is required. But there is no such definition of perfect straightness, right? So he will manufacture some part and it will go to the inspection person. What inspection person is going to measure? He will be measuring the diameter and he will measure the length. So suppose the part is got manufactured like this. This is slightly exaggerated, but suppose it is slightly bent like this. And But inspector uh, cannot reject this component. He cannot reject this component because he will check the cross-sectional diameter and he will check the length. So inspector is going to pass this component but it might fail in the function due to that form error due to this geometry error it might fail the function but uh, if we use geometric tolerances like this in this case what happens then in this case uh, in this case the designer has clearly said his intent to the manufacturer i want this part to be manufactured and by straightness tolerance of 10 thou over there on overall length so i have specified this amount of tolerance over there so manufacturer is also clear inspection person is also clear what is need to be manufactured and how it is to be manufactured so he will manufacture that component and this component will go to the inspection person he will measure it he will also going to measure the straightness and he will accept the part and it is going to work in function as well that is what done by this geometric dimensioning and tolerancing the designer's intent is clearly told to the manufacturer and it is also told to the inspection person as well so clarity of language is there that is why this geometric dimensioning and tolerancing was introduced it was introduced in during world war ii when components of the weapons were manufactured at different different vendors but it was not getting assembled though parts were made correctly what was happening these errors form errors orientation errors location errors those were the problem though what standard says that the asme y14.5 asme y14.5 says that as per rule one the diameter the size tolerance controls the form tolerances the size tolerances controls the form tolerances like this so suppose if diameter is given 10 plus or minus 0.5 so this 0.5 itself controls straightness, flatness, circularity and cylindricity. These are form tolerances are controlled by this size tolerance itself. But if someone is not following this ASME standard and he, he is not following any of these things, he might manufacture this component, but this will fail in function. That is why geometric dimensioning and tolerancing is used. That is clear intent of a manufacturer 
clear uh, sorry clear intent of a designer is communicated to the manufacturer and it is also communicated to the it is also communicated to the uh, inspector person inspection person as well so this is first benefit let's move ahead and see what other benefits are suppose this is the component suppose this is the component and we haven't used any gtols i see gtol to geometric tolerancing so we haven't used any geometric tolerances gtols though each feature diameter this diameter each diameters are individually defined each in every feature is completely defined and this drawing goes to the manufacturer this drawing goes to the manufacturer and now manufacturer has manufactured this component manufacturer has manufactured this component something like this this component looks something so this component looks something like this this component looks like this if you see it is slightly exaggerated but if you see the orientation and everything it is not matching it might fail the function but what happens in the inspection what happens during in inspection this part will go to the inspection person what he will see check he will check with this drawing he is going to check that component with this drawing so what is that now the inspection uh, guy the inspection person is inspecting this component he will measure the length 2.90 2.90 is there 0 0.40 0 0 0.15 0 0.15 3.900 5.000 2 uh, point uh, 2.850 everything is matching everything is matching and nothing is like that is not matching with this these dimension what what inspection person has to do he will accept this component he will accept this component though it might fail the function it might fail the function it might be not fitting in the assembly that is problem with the coordinate tolerancing it do not controls the location it do not controls the orientation precisely so if we want to control that we have to go ahead and use geometric tolerances what geometric tolerances in this component we can use suppose if we provide suppose if we provide this face as datum a this face as datum a and also this this face we make flatness flatness of suppose 50 thou or whatever is required we make this this surface this front face as a datum a and we make that surface as flat as well and then this id suppose this id i control it perpendicularity with that datum a perpendicular perpendicularity with respect to the datum a i control that and i make it datum b and then these diameters I control it by runout tolerance or location tolerance. Runout tolerance with respect to B and A if I want to do like this. So I can control it by these geometric tolerances. Then what will happen? What is required will be manufactured and it is going to succeed in function as well. That is why geometric tolerances are required. So this is second benefit. First is clear intent is communicated. And these are the benefit of using geometric tolerances. Let's move ahead and discuss further more benefits of this geometric tolerances. Let's see further more benefits of that. Suppose this is the part. This is a part in which there are four holes. One, two, three and four. There are four holes over there. And this is a center hole over there again. Fifth hole. And each and every dimensions are given from this coordinate or rectangular tolerances method. What happens? Let's discuss for this fifth hole. For fifth holes, let's discuss what is tolerance zone. Suppose this is the true location. This is the true location. What is the tolerance zone? Just a moment, I need to change this. So, what is it? What is that tolerance zone? Tolerance zone is upside 0 0.02, downside 0 0.02. Horizontally left and right 0 0.02 and 0 0.02. So suppose this is the tolerance zone. This is the tolerance zone. Total will be 0 0.04. Total will be 0 
total will be this 0 0.04 as well. So in this way, it can vary. If you see in up direction, it can vary up plus side 0 0.02 minus side 0 0.02. But if you see the diagonally, diagonally it can vary more. From there to there, it is almost 0 0.0, 0 0.057 from there to there. So tolerance zone is something like this. Diagonally, it can vary 0 0.0. 57 but uh, in horizontal direction in vertical direction it can only go 0 0.04 this is all total from the true location so that is a problem that is a problem these with these kind of tolerances what happens if we use geometric tolerances with the same hole with the same hole we made these dimensions as basic dimension we make these dimension as basic dimension what happens then, uh, if these dimension are basic dimension, we identify the true location over there. Now, true location has been identified and this diametrical symbol is there and 0 0.057 of this tolerance is defined. This 0 0.057 diagonal value is now used over here for a circular value. So, it's kind of homogeneous tolerance. This is a homogeneous tolerance of diameter 0 0.057 homogeneous diameter of 0 0.057 so that is that is the benefit of this tolerance this makes this tolerance zone homogeneous and it adds the tolerances as well so the rectangular tolerance zone was something like this or square tolerance zone was something like this it was something like this right but this tolerance zone is now greater than that and it is almost adding 57% of additional tolerance, 57% additional tolerance. So, this is what done by geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. It makes tolerance zone homogeneous. It adds tolerance as well in some cases. So, that is the benefit and again, there are another benefits of it as well. Suppose these four holes, there are four holes like 1, 2, 3 and 4. These four holes, we define it from the ages, from the age of the component is defined. But suppose if we want something like that, all together a pattern can have more tolerance. Like all four holes can together move more, but relative to each other, they need to move less because that is more precisely needed. So, in that case, what happens then? We can use this composite tolerances. In composite tolerances, what happens? In composite tolerance, what happens over there? That the first segment controls the patterns location, complete patterns location and the second Second controls the relative features. The relative features, the second frame controls those. So, that is the thing. So, first thing is bigger tolerance zone. Complete pattern has bigger tolerance zone. But relative to each other, these holes can move less. That is only can be controlled by these geometric tolerances. And this is use of composite tolerance. So, in that way, there are many, many fits of using geometric dimensioning and tolerancing. I hope this, these benefits are clear to you. I am open to comments. If you comment any, uh, if you have any questions, you can comment over here. I will attend those comments. Now, let's move ahead and discuss the uh, symbols. There are 14 symbols. There are 14 symbols of geometric tolerances. Four are form symbols. Flatness, straightness, circularity and cylindricity. These four tolerances are absolute. Is not dependent on any feature. It is for individual feature. So, it as it is for individual feature, it do not needs, it do not needs any datum. So, individual feature, this flatness, if, if I say it is a flat, it is absolutely flat. So, suppose this is a block. If I say this surface about flat, so this should be within two parallel planes. So, suppose this complete surface becomes this much inclined. 
it doesn't matters too much my flatness planes will orientate like that so it is absolute for individual feature it is not related with the these bases so that is why it is for individual features and that is form tolerances now profile tolerance this is a profile of a line and this is profile of a surface profile of a line and profile of a surface i say it iron man or uh, rajnikanth of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing it by this much it can kill the thanos or it can kill all the errors it can control size it can control form it can control orientation it can control location so it be use these if we use uh, this uh, profile tolerance it can control everything so you just provide true profile by providing basic dimension this will control everything and also it can be a relative feature or non relative or individual feature or related feature that is why this is rajnikanth of geometric dimensioning and tolerancing it is applied for individual feature as well and related feature as well so datum may or may not be used in this case so that is the thing then related features what are the related features related features if i say orientation this is parallel so if i say this plane is parallel to something but there is no reference to measure if there is no reference to measure it is useless so if i say this is parallel it has to be there some reference to compare the parallelism or perpendicularity or angularity or the location or the run out so these needs some datum these are used for related feature if i say concentricity so this feature should be concentric with with other feature so in that way this is for related features datums are mandatory for all orientation run out and location so perpendicularity symbol we are all aware this is the perpendicularity angularity and parallelism remember that these controls orientation only though the tolerance zone seems like it is going to control the location but the tolerance zone is too parallel plane it will move with the size it is not going to control the location of any feature it is only going to control orientation it is not going to control suppose this is the feature so for this feature location with the datum will not be controlled just its parallelism with this datum will be controlled so that is the thing circular run out total run out these these tolerances are generally used when feature is rotating about a axis so axis is a mandatory datum for run out when any part is rotating whenever any part is rotating or bearings or some surface like that i have a bearing background so i we used to use this uh, total run out or uh, circular run out in case of bearing races and those things because it is in rotation about an axis so axis is mandatory datum in this and this is circular run out and total run out then location tolerances concentricity position and symmetricity this concentricity and symmetricity has been removed in 2009 from the uh, sorry in 2018 revision in 2018 revision it has been discarded because of its complexity of measurement so these are the symbols these 14 symbols are most commonly i mean these are used to control a geometry now let's move ahead and discuss with an example this is called as tool maker voice i hope you guys know about this tool i will just uh, slightly explain this tool and then we'll go ahead for selection of uh, geometric tolerances so this is the handle this is movable jaw this is fixed jaw so this is movable jaw this is fixed jaw this is l shape plate if you see over here it fixes with the movable jaw and when we rotate this handle when we rotate this handle there is a sim over there on which this rod rotates and this block is threaded block so this movable jaw is going to move linearly and going to hold a work piece so is over there so this is like a function and assembly of this tool let's move ahead further and see with this video this is the assembly this is the assembly process this goes then block goes then this part goes and bolt goes and this rotates over there i will play it again this this is movable jaw then this is the fixed jaw 
this is the seam it goes over there and then if we rotate the handle it will move so this is the functionality uh, this is the assembly of this tool and function is to grab some piece let's decide how to select tolerances for this feature so let's move ahead so these are the components in which this is movable jaw part number two part number one is the base then third component is the fixed jaw these are bolts screws keys or splines then eight number is this rod uh, stud and this nine number is the handle and if you see in this fixed jaw in this fixed jaw there is a slots like this if you see this slot like this and it has a seam over there if you see this part there is a seam on which this this stud rotates so that is the thing it rotates on this fixed jaw and then this part is threaded so it will move horizontally by make uh, so it will move this uh, movable jaw as well so in that way this length uh, this width between those two jaws can be adjusted so let's work on it how to decide how to select geometric tolerances over here now if i go ahead and select this movable jaw the bottom surface the bottom surface is going to slide the bottom surface is going to slide on these two protrusion if you see there are two protrusion like this on the base so on these two protrusion this surface is going to slide so what i need to do i need to make that surface as a flat surface first thing and that is a interfacing surface again that is a interfacing surface that is why I need to make that bottom surface as a datum as well. Suppose I make that as datum A. Now that side surfaces. There are two side surfaces. That, that is need to be controlled precisely. Because it is going to, going to fit within this width. And will have some sliding motion over there. Though there will be some tolerances. But we want to control that. So we can provide flatness on those faces as well. Both sides this side and we can make this as datum a and then this is datum b now what happens if you see these slots these slots are kind of a locating slots for that if you see this part this part has a protrusion like this over there this part has a protrusion this goes there and fix it and then these two bolts goes inside this hole and grabs this piece so in that way these holes are related to these slots that is why when dimensioning that when dimensioning that these two holes rather dimensioning it from the edges i should go ahead and dimension that from this slot center point or from this face i should locate that so that is why it will be related to the slot directly because its relation is directly with this slot not with these edges so in that way this is a locating slot for me what i will do i will make this as datum c then a b c is there and with that a b c i will control these bolt location so in that way you go ahead and study the drawing study the functionality and you select the datums so this is the way to select the datum and this is the way to decide geometric tolerances so we have seen this for uh, movable jaw now the other side the other side we can use profile tolerance or we can use parallelism with respect to a on other side of surface both is okay i will go with the parallelism i will go with the parallelism so that will uh, suffice the job so this is how we can select the geometric tolerances now let's move ahead for the fixed jaw move ahead for the fixed jaw so what is that so in this case also there is a slot there is a slot if you see this slot that on which these splines these keys goes in fits it and fits with the base as well so it fits with the base as well and then these bolts are assembled over there so in that way this is also locating slot for me so that will be a locating slot for me a datum then if you see this feature this feature is like this a profile where that seam fixes in so 
I should make that as datum. I should make that as another datum. That is also a locating slot for me. So I can define profile tolerance for that, and that is locating slot, and that another locating slot, and the bottom surface is going to fit on this, on this surface, the highlighted surface over there. So that is also interfacing bottom surface. I will make it flat. and i will make it another datum a b and c suppose a b and c so while dimensioning these holes on movable jaw those holes over there rather talk dimensioning it from edges i will dimension it from that slot and that slot so i will dimension it like this x value and i will dimension it like this y value so that is best way of dimensioning that is best way of tolerancing as well because these features are correlated to each other so that is why we have to assemble the uh, uh, sorry we have to understand the functionality and then we should decide these tolerances and then we'll go ahead and use positional tolerance with respect to a b and c so that is the thing now let's move ahead further with the base now this is the base this is the base and again there is a locating slot in which these splines these splines goes in say that locating slot so that will be there and then these two protrusions over there we have seen that this one there are two bumps on which this movable joy will be sliding so these all also need to be flat i will make the over flatness over there then these width will be interfacing width can be datum for me and then this surface can be datum for me so in that way i can define the datums and then positional tolerance can be given to the four holes so in that way you have to always study the assembly and then decide which tolerance is to be used and which uh, which should be selected as datum so in this way or uh, we can select the datums we can select the uh, geometric tolerances and we we can apply on a component so this is all for now thank you for joining uh, me live on youtube uh, you can always uh, i will make this video available for you guys so you can you can always uh, come here and visit this video and if you have any question you can comment over there or you can contact me as well on If you want to note down my mail id it is bipin dot sing bipin dot sing at asomek dot com bipin dot sing at asomek dot com and my number is nine one nine seven two four five four three triple eight. so if you have any question you can ping me any time you can drop me your mails <coughs> and if you find these videos are helpful to you uh, try to uh, if you can make uh, my membership uh, you can if you can take my membership on youtube channel that will help me in monetary basis i want to thank you my members as well so thank you uh, and do let me your questions comment in uh, in in the chat box i will reply those answers so thank you for joining see you take care of yourself don't go out much uh, third wave is com coming so take care of of yourself thank you see you bye bye